He grabbed it, but I was too slow. Let's see if it goes again. There we go. Feels like a decent something. Oh, it's a bass. It's a decent size one right there. Largemouth bass. Nice, okay, we got something. Pressure's off now, we got one. A lot of people tie their own flies that are in the fly fish and some of them don't, but for me anyway, it's more rewarding, you know, when I tie my own flies and then a little more satisfaction when you're able to catch something and I guess trick a fish on, you know, something of your own creation. So I enjoy it, it's relaxing for me, kind of like arts and crafts for outdoorsmen in a way. So yeah, I just enjoy coming up with different stuff and then taking them out on the water to see if I can catch something. Yeah, thank goodness it's calm. Pond's beautiful with all the yellow leaves. Well, let's see if we can get into some today. A lot of these flies have pretty unique and sometimes funny names. I'm gonna tie a, a pattern here that's been successful for me in the past. It's actually called a Thin Mint. It's a streamer pattern, but it's basically just a variation of another really popular streamer used for all kinds of fish called a Wooly Bugger. This is actually turkey feather called marabou. It's used in a lot of patterns, moves nice in the water. So tie down a little bit of that for the tail here. And this, this pattern actually uses three separate colors of marabou, which is somewhat unique. Usually they you just use one color. It has an olive, a brown, and then the top of it will be black. There's a ton of different fly tying materials that come from a lot of different animals. And you know, the modern fly tying, there's a lot of synthetic materials too that kind of behave like things you find in nature. So it's just kind of an olive brown and black combination. Just kind of stack them in there and make layers and so give kind of a two-tone, three-tone look to the fly when it's in the water. So in case they're keying on different things on a different day, kind of increases your chances. So let's put like a little fake worm on, trying to, before I had on one that looked like a minnow, it's tied. Still feathers and depends on what kind of feathers. Some of them hold the fly on top of the water. Others like undulate under there and like pulse and stuff. Just depends on what feather from what type of bird. There we go. I think it's about like the first one. Maybe a little bigger. Keep that one. Make a couple decent little fillets out of him, probably. I don't usually keep fish, so I don't have a stringer or anything. I usually just let them all go. When I was a kid, that was uh, riding up from 20 mile with the bike hanging off the handlebars. Historically, I've had the most luck when I kind of mix and match those things, especially on the, uh, this is called a streamer pattern. So with the streamers, yeah, a lot of times I have found that giving them lots of different things to look at in an individual fly sometimes makes you have a little bit better luck. This is actually feathers from a peacock. It's called Peacock Curl, and it's got like a really neat iridescent property to it here. So we're just gonna grab a few of these. These are pretty brittle, so they work better if you kind of put them in a bundle and kind of makes it a little bit stronger and more durable of a fly. This is one of those like magical fly tying materials. Like it's used in a lot of patterns. It's something about this iridescent sheen that it gives off. I, I think uh, especially for trout and some other species, but definitely trout, something about it. They are very attracted to. This is actually chicken feathers. Special characteristics on the feathers, depending on, on what kind of fly you're tying, but for this one here, it's got some pretty stiff like barbs that'll help push water and kind of, not only can they see it, they can kind of feel the water moving with these, so. And it looks like legs on different critters too. Keep them in fly. And people have different preferences on how long they want their tails or, you know, if they want longer hackle here, that's what this chicken feather's called, hackle. Some people prefer it a little longer, so it maybe it pulses more 
yeah, that's basically it. This is a size eight hook. Hooks come in all different sizes. The smaller the number, the bigger the hook. I tend to stick to sixes, eights, and tens for most of my tying needs. Again, I'm fishing for trout. You know, if you were into some more bigger predatory fish, you might, you know, tie twos and ones or one slash zeros or whatever. So, uh, but this is a good size for the type of and size of fish that I'm targeting. A lot of times when I am fly fishing, I'll use two flies at once, not with bait. It'll just be this fly and then off the front of the back of this, I might put something different on, you know, maybe 18, 20 inches away from it. And the reason for that is maybe you tie one that's more of an attractor fly to get the fish's attention and then maybe something that's maybe a little more natural looking hanging off the back. So uh, maybe the attractor fly gets their attention and then they eat the other ones. Uh, for the most part, I'd say 95% of the, the flies that I fish are, are ones that I tie. Go to a fly shop. Those people are experts in this. They can ask you questions, figure out what kind of fish you're gonna be targeting, where you're gonna be fishing, get you set up with the right equipment. That's important. Go to YouTube, watch a lot of videos to learn. A lot of people suggest the first few times you go, hire a fly fishing guide, have some hands-on learning from someone who's uh, a professional. Um, and then if you want to get into fly tying, kind of the same steps, go to a fly shop. They'll sell all kinds of materials, but again, they'll ask you a lot of questions about what type of flies um, you typically use, type of fish you're targeting, and they can get you set up with, you know, the basic tool set and then maybe a few materials to tie, you know, a couple of the main flies that you use. And fly tying, it can be addicting, but the materials can be overwhelming. I mean, if you go into a fly shop, there's just walls and walls of uh, different types of materials. So I, I've found it's always best to pick a few patterns, get the materials you need to tie that pattern in particular. Once you master that and, and have enough for your needs, maybe pick a couple more patterns and, and go buy those materials. A lot of people get into it thinking, oh, I'm gonna save money by tying my own flies. That's not the case, but it's not about saving money for most people. Uh, it's about the enjoyment of it and the satisfaction of creating something by yourself and then catching fish with it, so. Nice, got her all spiced up. Gotta have it for breakfast. Can't lose with that. Another couple minutes on that side and it'll be good to go. Good enough. Why not? I don't think I've ever eaten largemouth bass. We'll see. Potatoes are good. Mm -hmm. Moment of truth. Not bad at all. Pretty good. Better than catfish. <laughs> Simple and delicious. I'll probably hunt tonight.